Fearing the dissolution of the United States JC Women, representatives from 10 states met April 12, 1985 at Godfather's Pizza in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where an offer was made that we couldn't refuse, the opportunity to begin organizing Women of Today. Vicki Fisher, Region 5 Vice President from Iowa, conducted an informal meeting, mainly a sharing of what was happening in each state. Minnesota gave permission for other states to use the name Women of Today if they became a part of the national organization once it was formed. The purpose of the national organization would be to serve as a network system for states to provide a sharing of information and begin the process of trade. A coordinator was needed to share information among the states until we could meet again at the JC National Convention in Indianapolis. Jackie Schumacher from South Dakota was unanimously elected. On June 19, 1985, another meeting was held at the Howard Johnson's Motel in Indianapolis. A motion was made by Minnesota, seconded by Iowa, to form a national organization under the name United States Women Today. Barb Fish was elected national chairman with Don Young as treasurer and Debbie Cousy, California, as secretary. September 4th, 1985, the U.S. Women Today were incorporated. Bylaws were written and trademark proceedings for the name began. By June 30th, 21 states had joined the national organization and become the charter states of the United States Women of Today. Minnesota, Washington, Arkansas, Illinois, Missouri, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, South Dakota, Nebraska, California, North Dakota, Iowa, Montana, New Jersey, Idaho, Michigan, Ohio, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Tennessee, Wyoming. As of September 1985, the U.S. Women's Day was incorporated with Minnesota being the first state to charter. The first national convention was held in Peoria, Illinois, July 10th through 13th, 1986, along with our bylaws voted in, elections were held for the first U.S. Women Day officers. Vicki Fisher, Iowa, was elected president. During those first few years, many of our current guidelines and traditions were established. Our mission statement was developed. The mission of the United States Women Today is to provide state and local member chapters, opportunities in the areas of leadership training, personal growth, and community service, and work in partnerships with established foundations. A competition was held for the national logo, Illinois won. The Women of Today year was established as May 1st through April 30th. The last full week of September was set aside as Women of Today week. July 1st was recognized as Founders Day. Starting in 1990-91, a national newsletter was published, The Today's Leader. The U.S. Women Today Creed was adopted and recited for the first time as a group at the National Convention in Mankato, Minnesota, June 11 through 14, 1987. We, the United States Women of Today, are dedicated to our community and nation, are committed to strengthening our individual talents, and stand united by our friendship and belief in the future. Our organization started with six leadership positions, President, Secretary, Treasurer, Administrative Vice President, Programming Vice President, and Parliamentarian. However, to meet the demands of leadership training as well as personal growth, the officer structure began to grow and change over time. In 1990, the Administrative VP was changed to Membership VP to better reflect the duties of that position. To aid in the strengthening of our individual talents, the members established the programming areas. In July 1988, three internal areas were established. Focus on women, STEP, success through enthusiastic participation, and personal enrichment. Focus on women would include health and personal concerns, careers and economics, American involvement, and women's issues. There would be three STEP areas. Step one, for members of less than 90 days. Step two, for members of less than a year. And step three,
for members of more than one year or any past member who left the organization and returned at a later date. Personal enrichment, which would include effective speaking and effective writing. In May 1990, the chaplain area was established. Also, the areas of leadership, team building, and listening were added to the personal enrichment area. By 2007-2008, it was becoming apparent the original programming areas were not fully meeting the needs of our members in the 21st century. After a three-year-long reorganization process, the programming areas were updated and renamed. Health and Wellness and Personal Development, which would include the STEP area. In addition, a fourth STEP area was added, Step 4, for our long-term members of over six years. All these changes became effective May 1, 2011. After six or seven years, it became clear that members were looking for a more distinct way of participating internally, and the programming areas were once again overhauled. After a two-year review process, the two internal areas of health and wellness and personal development were combined into one internal area. In accordance with our mission to work in partnership with established foundations, the external program area was developed. From the start, we began working with March of Dimes. However, by 1988, we began hearing bids from other foundations and working with them on a two to three year cycle. We worked with nine other organizations during our first 22 years. During our first six years with March of Dimes, we raised $555,683.70. During our first 22 years, we worked with eight other foundations including Cystic Fibrosis, Lost Child Network, Arthritis Foundation, Leukemia Foundation, Resolve, Breast Cancer Awareness, Multiple Sclerosis, Parents of Autistic Children. Starting in 2007, we began working with NACADVA, National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and in 2009, Domestic Violence Awareness became our permanent external programming area. In the past 13 years, we have raised over $315,000 for domestic violence awareness. During our 35 years of partnerships with other organizations, we have raised over $1,275,000. We also started our annual Buckets of Sunshine project at our year in meetings, having donated over $55,000. Starting in early 2000, we began doing service projects in the areas where the mid-year meeting was held. Service projects have included making and donating blankets and bedding for local shelters, working at Opportunity Village, including their village store, as well as preparing meals for Ronald McDonald houses and touring facilities. Over the last 20 years, we have raised $6,335,415 for various community organizations. When totaled, the U.S. Women Today have raised over $7 million over the past 35 years. This is just the amount that was reported, a small fraction of what our membership members and chapters have actually raised over the years. Along with leadership training and personal growth, we have always been, membership has always been a major focus of the Women of the Day, as witnessed by the fact that one of the first offices established was Administrative Vice President, later changed to Membership Vice President. In 1986, our membership consisted of 6,900 members in 400 chapters in 21 states. Over the past 35 years, we lost nine charter states. We added Indiana and Ohio, but then lost them. We started our 36th year, May 2020, with 1,508 members in 99 chapters and 13 states. 
Along with new members, extensions have played a big part in our membership numbers. In just the past five years, we've added two new states, Arizona and Oklahoma, as well as 19 new chapters. Also in May 2009, the Women of Today went international when the Minnesota Women of Today voted to support the newly formed Cyprus Women of Today, now called Cyprus International Women of Today. This chapter was started when a former Minnesota Women Today member and her family moved to Cyprus for her husband's work, and she so missed being a part of Women Today that she extended to Cyprus. They developed their own creed and their own leadership. With membership being a vital part of our future and to help the membership VP promote and encourage membership growth, the position of public relations director was added in May 1990, which includes the Buckets of Sunshine, and also Extensions Director. One major addition to our organization, which made all the difference in keeping track of our membership numbers, came in 1991-92 with the implementation of a national dues billing system. This involved transferring data from the prior record keeping system and updating the computer program to process the info for the national organization. This service was provided through the Minnesota Chapter Service Center. While the transition was a challenge, it did emphasize the importance of deadlines and details and allowed the U.S. Women Today for the first time to accurately and completely track their membership. Early on, the members saw the need to more effectively promote fundraising and assist the organization in a financial way. In 1987-88, the work was begun to receive 501c3 and 501c4 status enabling us to be a tax-exempt and former foundation. At the annual meeting in Minot, North Dakota in July 1988, the first U.S. Women Today Foundation meeting was held. They established an organizational structure and developed a system for gathering donations from individuals and corporations. In order to promote individual donations to the foundation, the Founders Club was established. The first 100 members to donate $100 in any given Women Today year became founders. Once that goal was reached, the level of curator was added for the next 100 to be followed by patrons for the third 100. We currently have 48 curators. Over the years, the foundation not only provided grants to the U.S. Women Today organization, they established a chapter grant program whereby a chapter can apply for a grant for a worthwhile project. The chapter must have a minimum donation of 100 to the charities prior to application. Also, a scholarship program where members who have returned to school after five years can apply for funds. In addition to better fit the requirements for a tax-exempt organization, the name was changed to U.S. Founders Charities. In order to be able to recognize a member's outstanding commitment and work to the national organization, in 1990, the Ambassador Award was established. It is the highest recognition the U.S. Women Today may bestow on a local member. One of the first nine Ambassador Awards went to Charter Chairman Barb Fish, Minnesota, and the first U.S. Women Today President, Vicki Fisher of Iowa. The ambassadors try to meet once a year. In mid-year, October 2009, they had their largest gathering yet. In the past 30 years, 152 members have been recognized as U.S. Women Today ambassadors. Unfortunately, 12 of them have passed. Cindy French, Arkansas. Alice Weiss, Missouri. Mary Jackson, New Jersey. Joanne Packett, Massachusetts, Linda Foster, South Dakota, Connie Lingle, Pennsylvania. Linda Gates, Pennsylvania, Carrie Lutz, Florida, Carol Minga, Illinois. Diana Frondorfer, New Jersey, Shirley Germain, North Dakota, Dora Dagenstein, North Dakota. During the past 35 years, over 35,000 women have been part of the U.S. Women's Day family. Currently, we have over 1,500 members serving their communities in 13 states. Arizona, which joined in March of 2017, currently has two chapters. Illinois, a charter state with nine chapters. Iowa, a charter state with three chapters. Massachusetts, a charter state with six chapters. Minnesota, with 55 chapters, a charter state. 
Missouri, a charter state with four chapters. Nebraska, a charter state with nine chapters. New Jersey, a charter state with three chapters. North Dakota, two chapters, charter state. Oklahoma, an original charter state which dropped out, but they rejoined in April 2017 with one chapter. Pennsylvania, charter state with four chapters. South Dakota, charter state with two chapters. And Wisconsin, charter state, one chapter. Special thanks to those women who took that extra step out of their comfort zones and spent time serving at National. Since 1985, there have been 193 members from 16 states who have given them their time and skills to help bring us to where we are. Many of them, 89, served only one year. However, at least three members have spent a total of 29 years on National. Amy Pumper of Minnesota served in eight positions, including as 2001-2002 National President. Terry Sherman has served 10 years in nine offices, including 2001-2001 National President. And Maxine Turner has served 12 years, including three times as Parley, three times as Treasurer, and as our 2012-2013 National President. Thanks to these three current members, plus all those who came before and after them, our organization continues to flourish 35 years after that initial meeting in Godfather's Pizza in Tulsa, Oklahoma. A special thank you to the 35 women who led us during those exciting, sometimes turbulent years as U.S. Women's Day presidents. Our initial charter chairman, 1985-1986, Barb Fish of Minnesota. Our first U.S. Women's Day President, 1986-1987, Vicki Fisher of Iowa, sharing our dreams. 1987-1988, Sue Schuler of Minnesota, we the people. 1988-1989, Pat Branston, Minnesota, yesterday's dreams, today's successes, tomorrow's visions. 1989-1990, Pat Zines of Illinois, Heartbeat of America. 1990-1991, Joy Hutchcraft, Illinois, Sharing the Vision. 1991-1992, Deb Van Meter, Nebraska, Excitement in the Air. 1992-1993, Mary Malmberg, Minnesota, Spirit of Excellence. 1993-1994, Carmel Mongold, Missouri, United We Stand. 1994-1995, Linda Gates, Pennsylvania, Catch a Rising Star. 1995-1996, Joy Hedstrom, North Dakota, an all-time high. 1996-1997, Deb Peters, Minnesota, planting our belief in the future. 1997-1998, Sheila Carroll, Minnesota, sharing the light of leadership and service. 1998-1999, Terry Pronko, Pennsylvania, Hearts Across America. 1999-2000, Barb Weigel, Illinois, True Colors. 2000-2001, Terry Sherman, Nebraska, Committed to Excellence. 2001-2002, Amy Pumper, Minnesota, A Vision of Success. 2002-2003, Michelle Thompson, Minnesota, Hand in Hand, Together We Can. 2003-2004, Karen Irwin, Minnesota, Imagine the Possibilities. 2004-2005, Karen Hecker, Illinois, Amazing History, Incredible future. 2005 2006, Brenda Almany, Pennsylvania, lending our talents. 2006 2007, Cindy Hilbert, Pennsylvania, patchwork of friendship. 
2007, 2008, Kayla Herman, Minnesota, Believe. 2008, 2009, Janet Esper, Illinois, New Dreams, New Visions, New Stars. 2009, 2010, Sudion, Wisconsin, Together We Make a Difference. 2010, 2011, Deb Stein, Pennsylvania, New Directions. 2011, 2012, Pat Fern, North Dakota, Building Our Future. 2012, 2013, Maxine Turner, Nebraska, Reach for the Stars. 2013, 2014, Cindy Erlocker, Nebraska, Reflecting Commitment. 2014-2015, Judy Harala, Minnesota, Soaring to New Opportunities. 2015-2016, Joyce Harpster, Nebraska, Lasting Connections. 2016-2017, Barb Weigel, Illinois, Strong Women. 2017-2018, Nikki Anderson, Minnesota, Imagine, Create, Inspire. 2018-2019, Laura Gaylord, Minnesota, Wings to Fly, Dreams to Be. 2019-2020, Cindy Sanders, Minnesota, Discovering Our Future. Our U.S. Women's Day year in 2020 was to have been a celebration of our 35 years as an organization and its members' ongoing commitment to service, growth, and fellowship. In March 2020, the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic hit, and we were all in stay-home quarantine mode. However, a little thing like a pandemic was not going to stop us from continuing our mission, providing state and local members with leadership training and personal growth, and the chance to celebrate our community service and working partnerships with established foundations. Using modern technology, including Zoom, we were able to hold most of the meetings and events scheduled that weekend from the comfort of our own homes. And most important, we elected our 36th U.S. Women's Day president and her staff. Angie Dietz Robinson, Iowa, is leading us into our future with a very appropriate theme, Stronger Together. Thanks to President Angie and the 35 other strong women who have led us. During our first 10 years, during our first 25 years, during our first 30 years.